Good morning. I want to read for you this morning Psalm 84 in its entirety. Now that's not typically what I do during this time, read the entirety of the psalm that's my daily listening for that particular day. But today I want to, because Psalm 84 is a psalm that speaks uh, from the perspective of, of a pilgrim on his way to Jerusalem to worship the Lord in the temple with God's people. So listen to this. It says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Now just a couple of things jump out at me that I want to share. The first comes in verse 2. It says, My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. And so here's the, the, the challenge for, for you and the the expression of my own heart. I have to tell you that as I walk around this building and as I come to this physical church here at Calvary on a daily basis throughout the week, I have to tell you that it's a blessing to be able to have a space like this to be able to come and work. And, and yet my heart longs for the day when these hallways again are filled with our children and our sanctuary is filled with God's people worshiping God because there is something that is powerful when God's people are gathered together in a physical space in God's presence to worship the goodness of God. God's mercy, his love, and, and his power in Jesus Christ is on display. Saint, I know that you're trying to make the best of the situation in which you find yourself, just like me and my family. And worshiping remotely has um, has some things that we can look at and they can be positive, but, but does your soul long for the courts of the Lord and the opportunity to be in God's presence with God's people? Let that be a longing for our hearts. The second thing that jumps out at me is verse 6. You know, on their way to Jerusalem, it, it took a while. And so even as they longed to be in God's presence and, and, and with God's people worshiping him, they, they, they knew that it, it, it wasn't going to happen immediately. And that's how we feel too. It's not going to happen immediately, but, but there's a journey ahead. And, and through that journey, there are periods of struggle, periods of dryness. That's what it says in verse 6, as they go through the valley of Baca. Now, no one knows exactly where this valley is, but it must have been a place of of danger, a place of struggle. It's referenced in a number of places in the Bible, a place of dryness. And when you're wandering or, or when you're on a journey in the desert, a place of dryness is a dangerous place, a place where you can't find water. But look what it says. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. And now, I doubt this meant that the pilgrims had the ability to just create water where there was none. But it does mean that they bring their joy into the midst of the dryness. We have the opportunity to do that as well. Look around you. Look at your neighbors. Look at your neighborhood. Are there opportunities for you to be able to make the place of dryness a place of springs? Because as you do that, verse 6 continues, I think you'll find that the Lord will answer that, that effort on your part. It says, the early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. You see, they make it a place of springs by bringing their joy into it, but God brings an early rain to cover the valley of dryness with, with pools so that they're able to go from, from strength to strength. They go from pool to pool in the midst of the dry valley of Baca. 
God will be faithful in the midst of our dry valley, and he will bring us from strength to strength, providing what we need as we go. The last thing that I want to share is, while all of us long to be in God's physical place, in in God's church, worshiping him together, we do realize rightly and theologically that God is not contained by the walls of a building. Uh, Solomon, when he was dedicating the temple, said in 1 Kings chapter 8, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. God was not limited to the physical temple, and he's not limited to our physical building. He is bigger than that. In fact, heaven and earth cannot contain him, how much less this house that we built here. God is where you are today. He occupies your space. He is a God who is everywhere. And yet, through the pages of the Bible, through the person of Jesus Christ, he has made himself known. May you know the peace that comes through knowing God today. Have a great day.